This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. Okay, so for those of you just joining us, this is Bruise Lab episode one. Episode zero is available as video on demand on our Twitch channel. We are about to build a home brewing alcoholic recipe live, and you're going to vote on the ingredients. So our our categories today are fermentable sugar, which is going to be an assortment of fermentable sugars that are fruit-based, because this is a cider or peri or a jerkum. And then we're going to have an adjunct category, a tannin category, and a wild card category. The wild card category is going to be selected from some of our members and patrons that, uh, that expressed interest in being in control of wild card today. So I have that list pulled up in a separate tab and I will have somebody randomly select a number and that number will decide who is going to be in charge of wild card this time around. We're going to make a cider slash peri slash jergum. We've got to get started unveiling ingredients because you can't see the whole, the whole table here. So that's a real shame. We have to decide first off, ingredient one is our fermentable sugar. And, uh, this is going to determine a lot about our decisions going forward with the other three boxes that we have to unveil. Drum roll. Yeah, Paula. So first off, we've got, I don't know if you can see this, canned apple juice concentrate. We've got three cans of that. Each can makes about 40 ounces of apple juice, which will give us a starting gravity of about 1.05. And then it'll also give us a little bit of room to put some other stuff in there. I make my cider from apple juice or apple juice from concentrate. I don't get the bougie cider. And I actually have one finishing right now and it already smells amazing. It's perfectly okay to homebrew with these cans of concentrated juice. You just need to reconstitute them until you hit your desired gravity. So that would give us a cider. Our second potential ingredient is pear juice. This would give us a peri. And I didn't realize this when I put in the Instacart order for this, but apparently pear juice is made for babies. So just pro tip, shopping tip, if, uh, <laughs> if you need... If you, if you need pear juice, go down that aisle where the, like, the baby food and drinks are and pear juice. So I'm going to presume, I haven't, I haven't done any math on here, but I'm going to presume that this is about the same starting gravity as apple juice. And we'll test that. If we go with a peri, we'll test that before we start. Next up. Plum juice was a thing that I couldn't find, and I really wanted to find plum juice. Then I considered maybe juicing some plums. That just feels like a lot for something like this. I did home make one of the ingredients that's going to be in one of the, the boxes here in a minute. I hope he's in here. Uh, Rex, who has been dogging me about this on YouTube for a while. If not, Rex, this one was for you, buddy. We've got prune juice. I feel like for all of those folks out there that love putting raisins into their homebrew, uh, prune is like the next level version of that, right? It's like extra, extra nutrient. <laughs> it's, it's the Hulk version of the raisin, in my opinion. What do y'all think about that? <laughs> I mean, it'll definitely uh, assist you in certain areas of your own life as a nutrient. They have these pictures of these juicy, fresh plums. Like, mmm, that's just, that's gonna taste like biting into a fresh plum. Man, I can't wait to get my hands on that $2.49 jug of prune juice. Have a sip of that while I'm mowing the lawn. Last option that we have, which I think is a fun one. It was, I think the most expensive thing up here <laughs> so far. We've got two lovely little jars of quince conserve. It's like a quince jam. I am not super familiar with quince. I've never tasted it. I don't know what it tastes like. From my reading, it supposedly tastes like a sour apple. Quince makes your mouth pucker hardcore. That's fun. So... <laughs> 
I guess I should taste the quince. That would be that'd be wise, wouldn't it? That way I can tell y'all what you're getting into here. It smells kind of like crab apple. Oh, it's really chunky. Like there's bits in it. It's very sweet. It's gritty like a pear, the, the fruit flesh that's in there. Not wildly astringent though. It tastes a lot like a pear. Interesting. Wash it down with a swig of prune juice. I just might, be careful. If y'all don't choose prune juice, I might just pour a glass. Okay, let's get the pole up. One of these is going to become the base of this recipe. Apple juice concentrate, pear juice, prune juice, or quince jam. Paula says she's got bottles of pear juice waiting to be used. Rub Duck Sue says, yeah, I'm voting for the prune. It's the most interesting. It is the most interesting. Um, I'm trying to remember the last time I had prune juice. I feel like I was probably a kid. Like that's a thing like when you're like, at least if you're a 90s kid in some parts of the country where if you're having a little tummy trouble, mom might come home with a bag of prunes or some prune juice, try and correct the situation. Okay, we're about to call it. Just moments left to vote. All right, so it looks like we've got a tie between pear juice and quench jam. So I'm gonna let y'all discuss in the chat what you would like to do about having a tie. Flip for it? Okay, okay, let's flip for it. What, what the hell am I gonna flip? Oh, oh, echo, oh, okay. How do we feel about that? Heads, quench jam, tails, pear juice. Yeah? Do we have a consensus? Heads, tails. Flip a coin. You got heads. Quince it is. Easy as that. Okay, this says 66 grams of sugar per 100 grams. This is a 340 gram container. So that means that a full two thirds of this is sugar. So y'all wanna plug that into a mead calculator for me. Starting gravity of 1.044. I'm gonna take that as truth. Okay, so we have some we have some room to play then. So let's pull out our first box. So this is our first box for adjunct. As you can see, there's one very obvious adjunct right there on top. So our first option is pears, <laughs> fresh pears. I, uh, I tasted one the other day because I actually cut one up to eat. And these are pretty neutral flavored pears. Not super tart. The flesh is pretty firm on them still. And uh, very, very tiny seeds inside these. So these we could cut up and put, put in there. They will contribute some fermentable sugars that we'll have to calculate for and a little bit of liquid. There's, they're pretty firm though. So pears are our first adjunct option. Uh, so the reason we didn't use acid as one of our, our categories is because most of the things that we had up here have acid in them, including this jam. But something you might wanna keep in mind is it's very sweet and not super tart, and it's not super tannic. And so we're gonna to need to balance that with, this, uh, with the other things in the boxes here. Our second option for an adjunct is something that I made myself just the other day. These are apple chips made from both red and green dehydrated apples dehydrated in my food dehydrator. What kind of apples? There was a Granny Smith and then a, I think it was a Honeycrisp was the red one. Red and greens aren't, re yes, I, I understand that red and green aren't kinds of apples, but thank you <laughs> for that clarification. Uh, okay, so, so third on our list is pomegranate cherry juice. This is 50% or 51% palm and 49% cherry. And this is one pint of juice. So we also have to consider that this is gonna be, this is gonna be part of our brewing liquid. Lastly, on our adjunct, is buckwheat honey. Buckwheat honey is one of the darkest, richest, richest honeys you can buy. 
It is earthy and slightly tart, really dense, and uh, quite delicious. One of my favorite honeys. Our options are fresh pears, buckwheat honey, pomegranate cherry juice, and apple chips that I made myself. I'm with you, Rub Duck Sue. I like the idea of adding buckwheat honey, kind of turning it into a sizer. I do think it would provide some complexity that the quince jam probably doesn't have on its own. I really like how tart these apple chips are though. I think these could help bring some of the acid that this is lacking. Aha, so uh, CJ says in the chat that his package arrived. I'm very excited. I hope everything is safe from destruction. We on our Discord server, that's discord.doingthemost.org, we did a secret Santa giveaway where we, uh, we exchanged homebrews with each other. And CJ was selected as my secret Santa recipient. <laughs> And I shipped CJ eight bottles of homebrew, and uh, there's some fun stuff in there, bud. Let's take a look at these results. All right, I'm gonna call that buckwheat honey it is. Let's get this up to about 9% potential ABV, given the quench jam and some buckwheat honey. If you can let me know uh, how many ounces of buckwheat honey that we'll need. And then the next thing we've got to do is take a look at what we want to do for tannins in this bad boy. So we've got another box to open. So in this box, what we're, what we're deciding on here is our tannin addition. Tannin is that kind of third leg of the stool. The first two legs being sugar and acid. Our third leg is tannin. And tannin is that thing that a lot of times provides the platform in your brew, the thing that, that rests under everything else. Sometimes that can be the sugars. Um, a lot of times that can be the sugars, but tannin is often an underthought of ingredient in home brewing. 10 ounces of honey will get us to 9.1%. Cool. I should get a recipe card going. What we've got right now is something that's going to be a little bit sour, a little bit rich. It's gonna probably ferment dry, so not, not gonna be super sweet. Episode zero is more fun. Isn't it fun to have an episode zero? You could say, I was there. I was there since episode zero. Let's talk tannin. Yeah, I know, honey, honey not a fermentable. But the, the thing is, a lot of the discussion around this episode was that it should be a sizer. And so I used honey as, the, as one of the adjunct, adjunct ingredients because I thought y'all might wanna turn this into a sizer. So, you're welcome. <laughs> there before episode zero. All right, let's talk tannin, y'all. In our tannin box. Oh, tannin box. Oh, tannin box. Let's start with this one. Very simple. No, these are not sea monkey eggs. That is one and a half grams of powdered red wine tannin. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy, you got it. Do y'all remember that guy years ago on the internet who tried to make mead in a fish tank while the fish were still in there? Option number two I'll give you is golden raisins. Some say that raisins provide tannin. Surely they do in small amounts. I'm doubtful. So we would probably put this whole box of raisins in there. It's an option. I added it because y'all think that raisins are a meme and I appreciate that about you. <laughs> Probs has got to get those raisins in there. Smoke, yeah, I'm with you. I am with you. It's, it's wild to me, the raisins as nutrient thing, but my understanding is that it was big in depression era brewing. And I actually included them in my dandelion mead recipe because I wanted to stick true to some of those recipes from the 20s and 30s. But my understanding is what happened was when Jimmy Carter signed homebrewing into law, a bunch of people like rushed to publish homebrewing books and they just took all those old recipes and all the bad knowledge that was written into those old recipes and published it in homebrewing books as if it was fact. Fortunately, there's a lot of Mythbusters out there kind of knocking that one down these days. Next option for tannin is Melaleuca tea. This is an herbal tea. And I think Rob's gonna drop a link in the chat. If, if you've never had Melaleuca tea, it is herbal, almost medicinal 
Uh, Paula, thank you, by the way, for the $10 donation to use towards next week's ingredients. I appreciate that. And our last option, tried and true and trusty, light toast oak. So that is our options for tannin. Red wine tannin, Melaleuca tea, golden raisins, light toast oak. Things to consider, red wine tannin is going to be fairly neutral and provide just a great sensation of tannin and body and mouthfeel on this. And it will be relatively unremarkable. And sometimes that's what you're going for, is you're, you're going for unremarkable subtlety. The oak, and yes, we will put this oak in primary. Uh, we won't use a whole lot. Um, oak is generally used in secondary uh, for better control and a, a more predictable rate of extraction. But we'll put some in primary because that's half the fun of this show, right? It's experimenting. And uh, as long as you kind of know how much oak you want to use, you can use it in primary, again, with just slightly more unpredictable results than if you use it in secondary. And then we also have Melaleuca tea, which is an interesting, very medicinal and herbal tea. Not medicinal in a bad way, though. And so I think this could be really fun in there. Obviously, we have these lovely golden raisins as an option. Let's refresh our results. Whoa, Melaleuca tea still very much in the lead. I love adding sometimes those really subtle flavors that pop in areas. They're like sparks of flavor. We're like, oh, yeah, this tastes like, like a rich quince, kind of buckwheaty. Whoa. What was that flavor? And then you kind of return back to the, the richness on the exhale. It's kind of fun. And it looks like right now that Melaleuca tea is out in front. Let's close this poll. Before we started, I created a list of folks from our members and patrons that were interested in being in charge of the wild card. There are five names on it. And I've got them numbered. First person to drop a number between one and five in the chat will get to pick who's in charge of our wild card ingredient. First person to drop a number between one and five. I see a three. So is Larry R on the chat right now? Larry R, are you on the chat right now? Larry, there you are. Okay, so Larry, we've got a wild card box. The first question is, do you want to open it? All right, Larry wants to open it. Let me get some of this Starzan off the table here. You're in charge. So you've decided that we're going to open it. The next decision you have is, are you going to choose the ingredient or are you going to put it to a vote? It's the anticipation's killing me. Okay, so Larry's going to choose, but y'all get to debate in the chat. All right, here we go. Take the power. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was a Christmas gift from Anna. This is from L.D. Carlson. This is like ground up lemon peel. I asked her, how do you use that in a brew? She said, I have no idea. So <laughs> maybe we'll learn today. There's one pound of it in here. We're not going to use all of this. Second potential ingredient that we can add, and CJ may be able to help us identify this, is one hot pepper. I think this is a scotch bonnet, but I am not positive. It might be a ghost pepper. Take a nibble, that'll tell you. Yeah, not gonna do that, but thank you. <laughs> yes, this is a dried pepper. I dried this in my dehydrator, same one I made the apple chips in. Next ingredient, potential ingredient, is this cute little cinnamon stick. Look at this little guy. And yep, that would go right into primary too. And considering this might be a one to two week primary, that's something to think about. Um, we might want to snap this, who knows, but it's going into primary, so consideration, cinnamon stick. I think it might be a ghost pepper. It doesn't have the shape that a scotch bonnet would have, so yeah, I think it's a ghost pepper. I just picked a pretty one. Or, we've got, I tried to get red hots, but I couldn't find them, so we have Brock's Cinnamon Imperials. Often very common in homemade non-alcoholic cider recipes that you heat up over the stove around the holidays. And for uh, decorating sugar cookies, question mark? So our wild card options are cinnamon stick, red hots, 
lemon peel or a super hot pepper, which I'm presuming is a ghost pepper. And thank you, CJ, for helping me identify that. So I'll let y'all discuss. I know Larry wanted to see your arguments for and against. Red 40 is the best of the reds. Is that the one that's made out of ground up beetles? Larry likes the idea of lemon peel. And honestly, I'm gonna need y'all to help give me an idea on quantity of lemon peel. I'm thinking probably like two teaspoons, maybe? Something like that. Y'all really like the lemon peel, but I, I'm so interested in the idea of brewing with the, the Red Hots candies, the cinnamon imperials. That's what they do in, in that homemade non-alcoholic cider where grandma puts some apple juice in a Dutch oven on the stove and throws some Red Hots in it. It like turns it red, it's fun. All right, Larry says lemon. Rub Duck Sue says use about a teaspoon of dried lemon peel for each tablespoon of zest you would have used. Okay, so a teaspoon then is probably enough. Okay, how does this recipe look to everyone? Quench jam, honey, couple cups of this Mililuca tea, and then a teaspoon of the lemon peel as our wild card. That's true, Larry. We could always add a little bit more later. I only have a pound of it <laughs> to use up. Does this look good, everybody? This look good? Let's get some, uh, let's get some tea going. <laughs> you don't have to send a second package. I just, I really want everyone to know just how fun it is to get paired with that goofball from that doing the most YouTube channel everybody's raving about. Sailed Haddock, you could go you could go shopping after this and make it today. I forgot to bring a towel in here this time. Okay, so we're gonna use a teaspoon woof, of lemon peel. Y'all <clears throat> that straight up smells like lemon pledge. So we're gonna add a teaspoon. Yeah, yeah, teaspoon of the lemon. So now let's get our quince in here. <laughs> Somebody help me out. What's the difference between like jam and conserve? Because this is conserve on it. Is that just like a European term for preserves? Some might call me a conservationist. It's usually enough. You don't want to oversteep this or it may end up quite medicinal. Did y'all know that this is this show is the reason I brought the uh, the microwave in here? Can't turn away for 30 seconds when everyone is awake. Yeah, yeah, we experienced that a little bit uh, last spring when taking care of my sister's kids for a couple of weeks. Kids that are past the toddler age and thus uh, quite active and precocious. Everyone say hi to Anna. She's coming to make sure that I'm still alive. No, you're checking in. Okay, so we are measuring out. 10 ounces of buckwheat honey. So what they have voted on, Anna, mm -hmm. is a sizer okay. made with quince jam. That's so exciting. And buckwheat honey. So I'm currently, bam, nailed it, 10.02 ounces. Did you persuade them? I didn't do any persuasion. Okay. I love buckwheat honey. Yeah, that's super sanitary. I just put my hands in the sanitizer bucket. And then in your mouth. You're behind the the recipe. The recipe, just my head. There you go. Honey goes in. Let's go. I am interested to see what flavors come out with this combo because it could be like really great or just like really disappointing. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see which, which of those camps it falls into. I do think we're gonna see some 
potential eruption. And so I will probably not use an airlock on this the first couple of days just to let it breathe. We'll see. The last one kind of spewed out the airlock. For those of you who are on our Discord, which is discord.doingthemost.org, you saw what that looked like. It was quite a mess. So the yeast that I have selected for this brew today is US05. It's an ale yeast. And I will let y'all discuss the merits of that. And I'm sure Rob and CJ, Paula, and some of our other folks who dabble in beers and braggots can tell you a little bit about what this is going to contribute. But I, I wanted to use an ale yeast, and I wanted to use something that uh, was in the realm of neutral while still providing just like a hint of character. We keep backyard rabbits, and I am watching my boy rabbit, my buck, Harry, uh, digging holes and running circles outside the window in his rabbit tractor, and it's very adorable. I can't wait to go pet him afterward. He is the best boy, probably the best rabbit that I have ever raised, and he loves to be petted on the head, so much so that if you stop petting him, he will force you to pet him by petting himself with your hand. Here we go. 1.063. 1.063. This is episode one. It smells like buckwheat honey. <laughs> Honestly, y'all, we're probably going to have to adjust the tannin on this in secondary. We'll see. I don't know that the Meluca is adding as much tannin as I had hoped for with that. But those lemon peels, uh, we might get some tannin extracted from that as well. And of course, the fruit pulp. It does taste very lightly apple-y. It's got that kind of grainy mouthfeel of a pear. Obviously, the forefront flavor in there. And then the lemon currently is subtle, but presumably some of that will leach out. The Melaleuca is nice in there. It'll be interesting to see if that makes the ride all the way through fermentation. So we're dumping that right in. We're not creating a starter or rehydrating it. Let's send it in dry. Okay, so we're filling our S-shaped bubbler with a little bit of sanitizer. Sanitizer is a good choice because if you get suck back, from here into there, it's not gonna hurt anything. Vodka is also a good choice. And uh, this S-shaped bubbler helps keep any buggies out while providing a water airlock that allows gases, in this case, CO2, to escape. All right, we're good to go. We're set up to ferment. So let's take a look one more time at our Recipe, 680 grams of quench jam, 10 ounces of buckwheat honey, two cups of Melaleuca tea, and one teaspoon of lemon peel that's dried and topped up to about the gallon mark with water, the starting gravity of 1.063. We'll be back here next Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time for episode two. Our members and patrons will be able to vote on what style we're gonna brew next week. Mm -hmm.